Good evening, everybody. Welcome to today's live session. Graham, I don't know whether you can mute the YouTube in the background. Welcome to the live session. And uh, uh, Graham, you don't watch your own webinar. Don't watch your own webinar. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> you kind of need to turn me off, Graham. Welcome, everybody. I hope you're well. Uh, we're live here on YouTube tonight for the session. And uh, what we're going to be talking about is uh, personal branding. How do you elevate and establish a personal brand? What if you've decided you're not going to focus on social media? What if you've decided it didn't matter and now you end up in a position where actually you desperately need it? So me and Graham are going to be, to use a British phrase, chewing the fat on this. Um, so uh, what we want to talk about is um, we're going to start talking about um, what does it take to establish a personal brand? What is a personal brand and what are some of the key things you can do with it? And I can see, hello, Jason. Uh, we've got um, UAK Runstone Calendar. Oh, it's Sarah Kang from St. Paul's. Um, so we've got a few people on here and do let us know where you're joining from. We're just letting everything uh, working um, and then we'll we'll chip in. Um right. And then, uh, Graham, do you want to do you want to say hello to everybody from the other side of the pond? Absolutely, from the, from the right uh, I, side of the pond for today. The right yeah. side of the pond. You're on the wrong side of the pond, yeah. even though we share a very similar accent, Dean. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, welcome everyone to today's session. Uh, Graham Riley uh, calling in here from uh, Saint Paul, also uh, in Minnesota. Jason, so thank you for joining us. Looks like we have several people joining us from. Uh, at what is today a sunny Minnesota. Uh, Dean, you started off by sharing that so we're going to be chewing the fat on uh, the personal brand. So perhaps you can start us off with uh, just some insights as to what, how are you thinking about or how are you defining what a personal brand is? Oh, well, if you, if you wind back pre-social media, personal branding was something confined to celebrities and, uh, you know, people in the media, they built out their personal brand and it was the perception people had of them, what they were known for. And, uh, and now we're in a place. Um, oh, hi, Jess Tiffany. It is. Uh, Thank you, Jess. Uh, Another Minnesotan. Hi, Welcome. Matthew. Strong Minnesota showing. Yeah, yeah. They, they turn out for their own. <laughs> they turn out for their own. Um <laughs> Uh, so pre pre social you know pre social media it was a, it was confined to celebrities, mm -hmm. but actually as you kind of go through it now, if you're trying to build a brand for a business, you have to have a personal brand. You have to be known for something. People buy from people. Mm -hmm. uh, even in companies, if you're an employee, you have a personal brand. Everybody's walking around with an identity. And the identity is either something writes for some people write for them or they write themselves. And it right. really is what you're known for. Automate right. this from Denmark. Denmark's close to me, Graham. There you go. There you go. Oh. Well, you mentioned, um, you know, pers personalities or um, uh, famous folks had personal brands. Now, mm -hmm. I'm older than you, Dean. So I remember when... Uh, Back in the day, we used to talk about people when they weren't around. And so yeah. my definition of a personal brand is what are people saying to you when you're not in the room? Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I've got the perspective that regardless of our jobs that we have, what our career journey is, we are always the CEO of mm -hmm. our own services. Now, mm -hmm. that, does that manifest itself as an IT consultant, an on-air personality like Dean Seddon, or, you know, or an accountant? You know, <laughs> so what, whatever uh, role you have taken in your career journey, it's mm -hmm. your personal brand that accompanies you, and it tends to be based upon what is it that I'm talking about. 
And obviously, as Dean said, as social media has come in, it's a lot easier to talk to far more people than we were ever able to talk to before. Yeah. And just on that point, the whole term brand has a personal significance for us, given that we are called Maverick, um, which is that we will defy um, some of the branding rules of the conventional branding rules. But when you think about branding, you think about a label, you know, it's cruel these days, but it's what they used to do, a hot iron, and they would mark an animal. They would mark an animal. Right. In other words, I am putting an identity. I am fixing this onto you so that mm -hmm. forever forwards, you will be known by that mark. Right. Right. Now, that sounds cruel in our modern times, but actually, we go back to the movie world, right? There's some fine actors and actresses. I think they're called actors now, generally. I don't think we say actresses anymore, but... There's some fine actors who only play in certain films. Right. Typecast, I think the term Typecast, is. yeah. Liam mm -hmm. Neeson. Liam Neeson, every film is him pursuing some injustice. Absolutely. Every film. Yes. And every film I want to watch. He, he's got special skills. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, I watched a new one. And, and when we think about branding... It is by choice mm -hmm. defining what we want people to remember about us. Mm -hmm. So Graham used a fine and a good analogy there of it's what people say, don't say about you or say about you when you're not in the room. I nearly got that wrong. What people right. say about you when, when you're not in the room. Right. Your reputation. Yeah. But you can choose to define that. Mm -hmm. And one of the key things about personal branding is narrowing down how you want people to define you. Well, perhaps we could walk through an example, Dean. If I'm, if I'm looking to uh, be on LinkedIn for um, securing uh, new business, mm -hmm. right? How could I start to uh, define uh, my brand? What would be a good place for me to start? Well, I think... The reality is we don't retain a lot of information on social media. We don't retain a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is what's the one sentence you'd want people to say about you? Mm -hmm. What is it? So it's going to be about probably a bit about your character mm -hmm. and a bit about what you do for people. Yeah. And if you can't go, that's it. Everything else, I've got to rest my whole brand on two key things, right. or one one sentence, but two key, two two key value a value and a result, right. or an, an outcome. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because off that you can build lots of things, but fundamentally you want people to remember you for a couple of key things. So, Hoover, yeah, Hoover. Mm -hmm. They don't. Who? Why do we still say Hoover, and and not vacuum cleaner? Uh, particularly in in Europe, we say Hoover. We right. don't say vacuum cleaner. Right. The brand, the person, the the identity, mm -hmm. has taken over a product or service. Right. And that's really the essence of personal branding. Is, you know, we've had, and I'm going to be very provocative for a minute, but if we look at it. From that simplicity, uh, here we go, Graham. Here we go. I'm going to do. Wow. It. I'm going to talk about Donald Trump for a minute. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had some people who've got into high office by literally repeating slogans. Mm -hmm. So over here, we've had "Get Brexit Done," "Get Brexit Done," and it won a landslide election victory in the UK. Mm -hmm. And in the US in 2016, you had Make America Great Again. Right. And people were chanting it. Um, mm -hmm. We're not going to them reasons, motivation, we'll not go there. It's... Right. But what I'm trying to get at is simple things stick. 
And ultimately, a personal brand is things that stick about you and you have to be intentional about choosing which things you want to stick. Well, let's make it a little more personal then, Dean. You've mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, uh, an idea of value that somebody has. What would you say were the two things that Dean Seddon has as a foundation for your brand? No nonsense. I'll grow your business. That's it. If I can no. get those two things across, no nonsense, I'll grow your business. Everything else can come out of that. Right. Right. But I want to be clear, straightforward. This is who I am. This is what I do. And this is, this is I grow your business. I help you grow your business. If I can let those two things stick with people, mm -hmm. then everything else is kind of supplementary supporting information. Right. So I've heard um, a more frequently um, uh, used term now. It's, it was less business to business. It was more people to people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the theme of everything that we do at Maverick is how are we nurturing and fostering relationships? Mm -hmm. And so perhaps talk then about how it's our, you know, allowing our personalities to come through because when we are in a business setting, whether it's for an interview and you're looking to secure mm -hmm. a new job or whether you're essentially looking to interview for the role of service provider in a B2B mm -hmm. situation, people have to feel that they know, like, and trust you first. Yeah. that gives them then some uh, or gives you some runway then to lay out perhaps why your product or service would be a best fit for them. Okay. I'm going to do an object lesson if I can. I know this is totally unscripted, but don't worry. I'm, I'm coming back. So many years ago, I was given this. So if you don't know what this is, it's called Marmite in the UK. Uh, what's it called in the US? Terrible. It's called Terrible wherever you are in the world. Yeah, but what, what's it officially called? Uh, well, it, it, it is Marmite in the, um, in the UK, sh in, the, in the stores that sell UK products. It is Marmite. Okay. So the only way to describe this, if you've never had this, it's disgusting. But it's 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 very popular in Australia. It's still very popular in the UK, but it's some kind of vegetable spread for sandwiches, for toast. I don't know. But many years ago, somebody got me this and it perfectly symbolizes what your personal brand should be. And I'm not saying literally terrible. <laughs> what I'm saying is this is an acquired taste for a group of people who buy it, love it, want more of it all the time. Mm -hmm. Not everybody will want this stuff, mm -hmm. but a group of people will. And very often what we try to do is make something that's unique appeal to everybody you as a human being are unique people will buy into you because of you and that makes you marmite not in the sense of you're deliberately making yourself distasteful to a people it's because you are making yourself a desired flavor for a group of people and people go, well, I don't know, but I want to appeal to everybody. You can't appeal to everybody. What ends up happening is you become vanilla. You become bland and and in, you fall into the background. You blend in with everybody else. So one of the things I think is really important about a personal brand is, is it is you. Yeah. Dean is Dean. You meet Dean in person. I'm a little bit quieter than I am on, on lives. I sometimes come to life on live video, Graham, and then I'm quite quiet, a bit quieter in person, right? That's right. That's right. But what you see is what you get with me. And mm. what that means is when people engage with me, they've already warmed to me. I don't mm -hmm. have to pretend to be something else. I don't put on a suit because somebody's visiting. I am me. Right. 
And so that's really important about personal branding because then people warm to you. They get a feel for your personality. And um, there's something inherently attractive um, about people being themselves. The authenticity. Yeah, the authenticity is quite appealing, quite attractive, quite quite um, mesmerizing with some people as well. I've met some people where they're really honest and it's like, wow, I could listen to you for hours. Right. Because it's just... So there is that uniqueness of you being you and then and then getting that out through posts, through videos, through content so mm -hmm. that people can go, OK, I get who this person is. But having that anchor to make sure that the key message, that one sentence people remember is this is what Dean can do or this is what Graham can do or this is what Jess can do or this is what Matthew can do or this is what Susan can do. So there's a one sentence, there's a one liner, there's mm -hmm. one key message you've got to land and everything slots around that. But you want to be remembered for something. So remember being remembered for being you and being yeah. remembered for the think key two, two, two key things you want to bolt together when it's no nonsense and I'll help you grow your business. That's mine. Okay. So, so Dean, I'm sure people who are listening in, they don't have a podcast. They're not used to being in front of the camera. They're not used to uh, speaking to uh, large audiences. So let's talk about some ideas or thoughts as to how, whether you're just starting off in your career, early in your career, you're a recent graduate, whether you're uh, a seasoned um, uh, sales professional or mm -hmm. you're an executive. If you don't feel that you have a personal brand and you want to leverage social media, what mm -hmm. would be a good place to start? So um, I was never comfortable with camera uh, uh, for a very, very long time. I, I, even now, to some extent, I'm not comfortable with camera. Um, some people, somebody asked me or somebody said to me a couple of weeks ago, they said, Dean, you seem so outgoing and confident on camera. How would you how would you um, approach this if you were an introvert? And I was like, I am an introvert. I am. If you meet me in a social occasion, you would not see me like this. I'm very quiet. I don't know. I don't strike up conversation. But when I come alive about what I'm passionate about, this is the Dean you meet. So if we talk about stuff to do with business, I come alive. Mm -hmm. So my first thing that I did, because I didn't feel comfortable doing video. In fact, every time I filmed a video, I thought, that's awful. I can't use that. And I've done so many videos over the years where I've just binned them. Um. So the first things I did, I did have a try of videos and was never happy with them. And right. as a result, never posted them. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I did a lot of written posts with pictures mm -hmm. and quotes that I would put together. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but it, it was a way to just do it. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Then um, more recently, uh, over the last two and a half years, because bear in mind, I didn't do any live videos two and a half years ago. Right. None. You've done four <laughs> today, right? Zero. I've done four today. So you've done four today, right? Yeah. So zero two and a half years ago, just before COVID, none. Mm -hmm. So all I did was when I've got to do this. I've just got to do it, got to do it, got to do it, got to do it, got to do it. And what I found, and I, I know this can't, sounds like really um, obvious, is I've found that basically every time you make a video and don't post it, you never move forward. Mm -hmm. And so I've posted videos that I think I absolutely don't like. I hate them. I feel so uncomfortable. I look at my lumps and bumps because I'm not exactly the slimmest of folk. And they're on there and I get a cringe, but I put them out. Right. And, and now it's almost like the ones that make you cringe are the ones you learn from more. Mm -hmm. And now I'm feeling far more comfortable. I'm doing TikTok every single day. Right. I'm doing Instagram reels. I'm live every day on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I've done four live sessions today. And honestly, the you can try and get your head around it any other way. You just have to throw yourself in. I know okay. that's uncomfortable, um, but it's the only way you get better. 
And actually, I've met a lot of TV presenters who've said, you just have to do it. That lens, the photography, and you have to show your face, either mm -hmm. video or imagery, if you're going to build a personal brand. Right. You have to. Um, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Right. So again, many of us might not have the opportunity to being in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a good way to um, dip your toe in the water is uh, certainly using your LinkedIn profile to just mm -hmm. establish uh, your presence. Mm -hmm. And if you have a LinkedIn profile, um, it's a good way to start uh, thinking about how is this communicating what's important to me. Um, and as we tend to go through our careers, we tend to pick up skills, talents and accomplishments. Every year we like to think we get a bit smarter, more learned as we go along. But what we're doing is we're collecting skills and talents that help us with, help us with our brand. Some of the things we collect we really enjoy, we're excited about, we're passionate about, passionate about, as Dean was speaking to. And then there's other things that we can do, sometimes better than anybody else, but we don't necessarily enjoy it. And so as you think about how am I, first of all, showing up on LinkedIn, if the answer is, oh, it was just something that I put together, well then think that this is a ref, a, a, a representation of my brand. It's an indication of who you are as a professional. Mm -hmm. It's an indication of your attention to detail and it's an, and it's an indication of your communication style. So LinkedIn's a great place to start thinking about how do I want to start shaping how people think about me? And a good place to start is what is it that you enjoy doing? Clearly, Dean may not have enjoyed uh, being on camera, but by repetition and his desire to help others, he's developed that muscle memory, that skill, in order to deliver on that outcome. Uh, so as you're thinking about writing your profile, uh, one more point, Dean. Yeah, sure. Is um, fill it full of things that you enjoy doing and how doing the things that you enjoy, how did it make a difference to the organization's financial outcome? And how did it make a difference to the customer or client experience? Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say for me, the posting pictures of myself right. and doing videos, the thing that made it, I me mean, not like it was my insecure personal insecurities mm -hmm and my um fear right. fear of making a mistake mm -hmm. fear of embarrassing myself fear of of doing something wrong right and and i looked at um a lot of people and thought wow how is it that they can do what they do and not give give a toss yeah <laughs> and it was like I'm not saying being reckless. I'm not saying being career destroying, but you know, when some people do something and it exudes confidence, like they've done it forever. Mm -hmm. It's when they reconcile the fact that their fear of standing out doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And that their fear of what other people think of them doesn't matter. And I'm right. not saying that we then suddenly, you know, be rude to people or nasty to people or, you know, provoke or polarize. I'm not saying any of that. But there's something that happens when you meet somebody who's comfortable in their own skin. And actually, the element of personal brand is liberating for you. You know, we're British, Graham, right? Yeah. You've been in the States for, what, 30 years, is it? Nearly. Right. We're British. Yes. We are brought up to be very restrained, mm -hmm. very self-conscious, mm -hmm. and don't stand out. Mm -hmm. Now, I know culture is different we might speak the same language in uh, uk us but actually the culture is massively different mm -hmm. but the perception is that american people are full of confidence they're mm -hmm. sure of themselves and that isn't always the case i've met some really brilliant people who are hung up on what if i make a mistake what if and it's it's all these insecurities come out 
Right. And actually, they're the things that make you not say what you should say or temper back. And it's not actually a personal branding problem. It's a personal development problem. But actually embracing personal branding forces you to confront these things. Right. You know, like I said, for an example, I am not a thin person. <laughs> right. Uh, I should go to the gym. I should eat better. And at some point I will crack that nut. Right. But there are some people who are my size, bigger, exude confidence. And sometimes, they go, oh, I don't want to put that picture up. Oh, I don't. We, we got to get over all of that stuff. We got to get over all of that stuff. Right. We really present ourselves, whether it be for a job or a career, whether it be mm -hmm. for a business, people buy into people. And right. people, people who are certain, comfortable in their own skin is part of your personal brand. Not over, not arrogance is when you're not comfortable in your own skin and you're overcompensating. But right. being comfortable in your own skin, people can sense it. They pick up on it. Wow. It builds trust. And mm. so when you share what you want to share, you go on LinkedIn, you put your profile and you go, do you know what? I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to share it and share a thought. Yeah. That's you building your brand. Right. It can be that simple. You, you've hit a couple of interesting points there, Dean. One is, what am I actually saying? And the other is how somebody is behaving because mm -hmm. you may have some pearls of wisdom to deliver, but if you're behaving in that arrogant way, then the messenger, the messenger is being shot and the message degraded. Mm -hmm. Right. And the inverse, if you've got hangups, um, you actually end up with the same scenario. So if you, if you're mm -hmm. not comfortable in your own skin, you end up, degrading the message and the message or weakening the message right. and the messenger. Right. So I gave a definition when we started uh, today's session as to uh, what is your personal brand? And it was what others are saying about you when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to break that down, we seem to have then three components. We've obviously got you and how you've been, been behaving and what, what have you been saying? Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, sorry, and thirdly, we've got an audience, right? That what others have heard. Mm -hmm. So perhaps as um, we're going through this, Dean, talk about um, uh, how to attract, uh, and you referenced this earlier, how to attract the right sort of people, your tribe, Mm -hmm. uh, as you look to develop uh, your brand and perhaps use it then for uh, mm -hmm. business development. Yeah. So you're right. You've got your behavior. Mm -hmm. You've got your words or your actions, yep. your words, and yep. what other people understand. Yes. What other people perceive. Right. And those three together create your personal brand. Right. So, so how do you attract an audience? So, I think we've kind of nailed the base of you being you. I don't think we need to cover that again, but you being you. I think then is that core message that really speaks to a very defined audience. You don't need the world to know your personal brand. You don't need millions of people. You need to know if it's for business development and I'm targeting business owners or lawyers or accountants, I need to not just tell people I'm a, a legal influencer on LinkedIn because I think actually that word influencer kind of undermines your credibility as soon as you use it. Mm -hmm. I, I think what you need to do is show people that you know what you're talking about and you can add value by sharing actionable content right. that, that brings that context to, I've seen that face. I've got to know that face. I know that name. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've consumed a bit of content that was useful to me. Mm -hmm. So I said this in a, a, a TikTok um, today. And I said two really useful bits, two ways to do some content that will attract an audience that you want. The first one is take the knowledge you've got and make it actionable. So in your content, take the knowledge you've got and make it actionable for your target audience. So if you're targeting accountants, what knowledge have you got? 
that you can make actionable, even if it's just a little tip that you can put into your post that will help and they can use, immediately use, actionable advice. So that's take your knowledge and make it actionable. Then in accounting, we picked a good one. What's complicated that you can make simple? In other words, how can you help people understand things better? So if there's a very complex piece of tax tax code and you can help people understand it in a more simple way, mm -hmm. you get known for the person who make, you know, the IRS's rules much easier to understand. That helps you build your personal brand. So knowledge, making it simple, uh, making it actionable, complexity, making it simple. So, so just to sum up um, to where we are right now, we've started off with building your profile that tells your story. As Dean shared, uh, everyone's got a unique story to tell. Further refine that story based upon the things that you enjoy and how it has made a difference to an organization. If this works whether you're looking to uh, sell your talent as a new hire or it works whether you're looking to sell your products and services to a company. Establish yourself as a subject matter expert in your profile. Secondly, uh, make sure that you are connecting with the people who have the ability to influence or decide on whether they hire you or uh, they're going to uh, buy from you. Make sure that you're networking uh, with the right sort of people. And then third, now you've got your audience and your stage, what are you sharing with them? As Dean shared, it's insights of uh, what can uh, people take action on and making the complex simple. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as you start to do that, they pick up on you help them make sense of that mm -hmm. or you help them do something better. And they re people remember that. Okay. People massively remember that. Well, and let's that talk. Let's talk about attention because uh, earlier you were framing out how people might feel a little in, um, inhibited to, to to try something new. Mm -hmm. And um, what would you uh, do? You agree or disagree with this? Is that we've got short attention spans, and so if you want to try something. Don't feel that if you try and you trip up and fail, then that legacy will be with you for the rest of your career, right? Yeah. Uh, we can try things because what is of benefit is that if you do goof up on a, a post or your profile and then you go and correct it, there's very few people who are actually going to remember that you goofed up in the first place. But yeah. if you, right? Social me if... You know how they used to say um, about a scandal in the newspaper, it's tomorrow's, what's it, tomorrow's something. A new Back story stage. today is, is tomorrow's, tomorrow's trash or something. It's like, it's, right. it's most new bad news doesn't, doesn't stick around unless you're the CEO of Enron. Um, you know, it doesn't stick around for very long. Right, um, right. So, so the vast majority of your mistakes that you will make and I make on a regular basis. Um, nobody remembers them. Like the attention span. And I shared this with somebody about LinkedIn. If you send somebody, if you connect with somebody on LinkedIn today, and let's say you have a lovely conversation about bits and bobs and business and all sorts of stuff for say 10, 15 minutes in the direct messages on LinkedIn. Say you had that today in two weeks time, the person you had that conversation with probably won't remember anything about the conversation and won't remember your name. Right. And this kind of leads to another point. Yes, that's a good thing. When you make a mistake, it'll be forgotten pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a quick, quick, quick example. A member of our team, Frank Ramirez, tell my ex-wife that, um, uh, <laughs> um, a member of our team found this a really amazing video and it, it was of a tree an old tree that had fallen down so it hadn't been cut down it had fallen down in a storm and this guy 
had carved this beautiful thing out of this tree. I can't remember what the shape was, but it was beautiful what he'd done. The workmanship was unreal. Right. And he, he, this member of our team, young member of the team, put the video up on LinkedIn and said, this is about craftsmanship and taking the time to mm -hmm. perfect something. And of course, some people said, what a horrible thing to do to a, to a, to a tree, a living and he got so much hate on that post. Mm -hmm. He thought the world was going to fall in because right. the backstory of the post was the tree was actually fallen down. So it had already fallen down. So I don't see the problem really. Right. But the context had been misinterpreted. And mm -hmm. he felt like awful for the whole day. Two days later, it was like, oh, yeah, it's gone. So I'm not saying you're going to make a mistake like that, but, but that's the reality of what happens. It, nothing lasts forever, really. Right. So what I'm hearing then is we've got a small attention, but provided that we are true to ourselves and we are consistent with our messaging around what we want to be known for, that is going to stick with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and one point about... Um, uh, growing your audience, which um, was an aha for me uh, a, a few years ago, is that when somebody receives a connection request from you, uh, you mentioned, you know, am I looking to get in front of accountants or get in front of the VP of IT? What they're doing is when they receive that connection request from you, they're thinking, am I adding to the quality of my network with the addition of Graham? Yes or no. And it can be a very quick judgment, but it's the information that I've put in my profile that's going to help tip it one way or the other. And I think that if we have the ability to build out our story of how we've helped people, then that tends to lead to more acceptances versus my connection request has been ignored. Mm -hmm. 60, 62% of people who, who get connection requests will dig deep into the profile to try mm -hmm. and get a, a steer on whether this person is a good person to add or they shouldn't add. Because let's right. face it, we've all had the experience of getting a connection request from somebody and then that kind of sales begging letter that comes straight after it. And nobody wants that. So they vet now more. They're more picky about who they let in and they yeah. look at, your profile header, they look at your profile picture, they look at your experience, mm -hmm. they look at um, um, what you've been posting mm -hmm. to try and get a gauge. Is this somebody who's going to just send me a sales pitch? 62%. So what's that? Six, <coughs> six out of 10 people you send a connection request are going to deeply review your profile to decide whether to connect. And that's true, by the way, of, of if you send messages to people too, they look at your profile to see whether I should supply surprise. Yeah. Um, Frank's asked a question, Graham. I don't know whether you can spot it at the top. Where yeah. So um, the 62% of people who view the profile more deeply actually came for some research we did on LinkedIn. Um, and we did it in uh, for a government agency in the UK. And we assessed... Uh, I think it was 145,000 profiles and how they responded to connection requests, messages, the works, and mm -hmm. tracked profile views that we could track. And it, it turned out it was 62% of the people actually looked at the profiles. So we, that's quite a sample. You know, if it was 1,000, you'd say, oh, that's only a small sample, but it was 142,000, yeah. I think it was. Well, and this is addressing uh, Frank. Um, uh, or anybody on the, on the call, if you're sending out connection requests, go and take a look at who has viewed your profile. And then if your profile of people who have viewed you are first level connections, it means that you've sent the connection request out, they've taken a look at your profile and they've said, yes, you know, I'm going to add to the quality of my network. However, if the majority of the people who viewed your profile still have the pending status, then think about how you're presenting yourself um, 
in, in, inside of your profile because it, it would seem that you're not reaching that tipping point where your intended audience is thinking, oh, I'm going, this will be a great addition to my network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Frank's just said there, interesting, exactly what I've experienced. I get 65% connection approval from. So, Frank, you must have a rock star profile, or I hope you do. Uh, sometimes, if you work for a big organization, your connection rate improves a little bit more because you're perceived to be part of a big company. So, people like to have people from big companies in their network. So, there is that level of um, benefit. Um, but no, I think. I think we make personal branding very, very complicated, but it is very simple, really. It's you being you, choosing what you want to be known for and threading that all the way through your profile, threading it through your content and adding value in that area so that people can see it for themselves. Don't tell them, this is what I do. Let them see it. Yeah. Uh I've had several uh, meetings with Frank, and uh, he's just a delightful individual. So I, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank, it may it may be interesting to know that my stepson, um, who is um, his fa is is uh, fa his dad's side of the family, are all from South America, and my stepson Josh is Josh Ramirez. So you never know, Frank. Somewhere we might be related. Well, it's kind of related. All right. Uh, so it, it, you're listening in. You've heard Dean share, you know, what do you want to be known for? Uh, and if you think of um, the descriptors, go and take a look at the skills section on your LinkedIn profile and say, do these skills support my value proposition are these the sorts of skills that are appropriate for the community that i wish to serve moving forward um we're, we've also talked about 62 percent of people are going to take a look at um, your profile if you send a connection request um we uh, we were working with um, a company here in uh, the twin cities and the leadership team looked at the sales team's LinkedIn profiles as to how they were representing the company. And uh, one of their uh, salespeople was DJ Eddie. Um, so he was looking to secure appointments with VPs of IT, chief technology officers, et cetera. But he ran a side business doing weddings and bar mitts for uh, DJing over the weekend. And so trying to garner an audience in the professional uh, world um, means that you have to present, this is my personal uh, brand in a professional setting. Um, the DJing uh, things can come as somewhat of a distraction because remember, if I'm reaching out to a chief technology officer, am I adding to the quality of my network by adding Graham? Do I really need a DJ in? Because I might not be paying close attention to further down in the profile. It goes on to describe this is an IT company. They provide IT services. Perhaps should I, I, I should add Graham. So it may be 62% is getting a look at your profile. Just make sure that you're elevating the most appropriate things for what you want to be known for. Absolutely. Can't agree more there. Um, do we have any questions from tonight? There's lots of people interacting in the chat, but do we have any questions about how they would build a personal brand? Are there any, uh, do you want to share what you do and how could you enhance your brand? Do put it in the comments and then we can, we can answer your questions. Um, let me, let us know. Um, I think, I think we can overcomplicate it. Can't we Graham? Really? We can make it confusing for people. And really, it's about simplicity. It's about clarity. Right. It's having very clear understanding of who your brand's for, yeah. what it stands for, mm -hmm. and, and then consistently. And I, I literally, just as we went live, saw a post. And it was somebody who said, it's 10% strategy. And I'm not sure I agree with the metrics, but I get the, I get the sentiment. 
right? 10% strategy and 90% consistent action. Mm-hmm. And that, that is so, it's very true. I, I'm not just sure about the, whether the percentages are right, but, but people don't remember, like we said earlier, people have short attention spans, but if people see things on multiple occasions... So they see your post on LinkedIn tomorrow and then they see you in a couple of days time and then they see you in a couple of days time. Mm -hmm. There's a picture that builds up in people's minds, not because of one post, but because of multiple things that you've done. Yeah. A courteous thank you message. Then um, a post that they see. Mm -hmm. Then they might um, uh, comment in their posts or something. This is all building a picture up in people's minds of who you are and what you're about. Yeah. So it is about lots of touch points with your personal brand. Right. Um. How many questions? I think because we gave Frank some airtime, he's gone all silent now. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to be mentioned anymore in the live. Any questions? Yeah. Wow. Tell you what then, who's who's on LinkedIn? If you're on LinkedIn, why don't you share your LinkedIn URL with us in the chat? And we'll, if somebody's feeling really brave, share your LinkedIn URL in the chat and we'll review your personal brand live if you're feeling really brave. I don't know whether anybody's brave enough to do it though, Graham. Well, this might be... Uh... The, the introvert group that's wondering what I've got to do uh, to build up my uh, personal branding. And now you're putting, now you're looking to put the spotlight on them. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you're an introvert, the simplest thing to do is start. And if, if the simplest thing to do is start is go, okay, I've got to write some posts because I don't want to do photos just yet or pictures or videos. Mm-hmm. I'm going to write a post that's about my topic that I'm going to add value into that space. And I'm going to do that on a regular basis and say, I'll do it twice or three times a week. Great. Start there. That'll help you build your confidence. Get your profile tidied up. Tidy up your profile because the vast majority of people are understating and underrepresenting their value. Um, Where am I pulling that information from? Well, If you know somebody who's a subject matter expert in their field, go and take a look at their profile. You know them personally. You've interacted with them. Perhaps you've worked with them for several years. You know them in person. You know what they're capable of. Go and check their LinkedIn profile. What we tend to find is, you know, who they are in person is grossly underrepresented with uh, how they're portraying themselves online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's Frank just shared with us? Hack away. Oh, Frank setting us a challenge here. Okay. Frank gave us a quote. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People f- f- will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So, uh, Frank, are you from Vote Frenzy? Is that Frank? I'm just looking to see if this is Frank. Do you know Frank's URL? Uh, I, I do, but I don't want to put it up if uh, Frank hasn't given the okay. I think he said hack away, so I'm assuming he means do it. Oh, okay. Not Let a challenge, go. free consulting. <laughs> Here he goes. Here is the Frank Ramirez. Are you putting it in the private chat so I can put it up on my screen, Graham? Yeah, I'll I'll pop it in there. There you go. Yeah, I found him. It was the one. So let me see if I can share my screens. I don't know how this works. So we'll see. There we go. There's our Frank. Can you see it okay? Yep. 
So let me just zoom in. So Frank, you've got a clear picture. Um, but one of the things I would say, and Graham, you want to chip into this because you do a lot of work on your side of the water with uh, profiles. But one of the things um, I can see here is that um, uh, my uh, Frank's votefrenzy.com up your game as i'm looking at it uh, um, as i'm looking at it i really want to know what vote frenzy is mm -hmm. so frank saying focused on improving people's li daily lives and the success of the organizations that serve them i think that's a really great statement but I think there should be more context there, Frank. What is it that's related to? You with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who, um, what is it you do for who, what, and why does it matter? Put some more context on it. Give people the option of understanding what Vote Frenzy is. Yeah. No, no Frank. Frank does have a, a large following. He's got yep. around 25,000 people who follow him. Um, what we what we are, are not able to tell Frank is, are these the right people, the influencers and decision makers who vote, friend, vote frenzy would, um, um, that your message would resonate with them? And uh, Dean's mentioned a few times about the consistency, the many little things done well consistently over time to build that reputation. It looks like uh, your last uh, post, last few posts were three or four months ago. So you've got tremendous amount of subject matter expertise, Frank, in your field. I know because I've, I've spoken to you several times. And so what is common knowledge for you? What is an aha uh, would be an aha moment for somebody else so as dean was sharing make sure that um, you're giving people actionable actionable advice and also make sure that you're consistent and you're simplifying what is some of the hardest work to do is taking somebody who has no idea who the heck you are all the way through their customer journey to Yes, I'm interested in doing business with this individual or this company. What else are you seeing, Dean? So uh, obviously that that's a really important one in terms of what you you using your posts to actually get that message out, even if it's just little thoughts. But then I can see Frank's actually actively engaging with other people. So this is this is good that Frank's engaging. But what I'd be thinking about, Frank, and I don't know who your customers or targets are, but I'd be, I'd be engaging with the people who are your customers or potential customers, not just the people, the good content that's on there. Yeah, so this is a really good post about somebody who's just got a job. Fantastic. Um, are they the right people? I don't know. Well, he says he's an influencer on TikTok, and the more I study your profile, the more I learn you're involved in influencer marketing. But you recall, Frank, at the beginning, when I looked at your profile, I couldn't contextualize who you were. But as I've gone through a bit more detail, I've started to see how you use the platform. Um, I start to realize, oh, Frank's an influencer marketing. But what we don't want to do is leave people to basically guess what you do. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we can see we're making social media sharing into an audience engagement services platform and your head of products at Vote Frenzy. So basically you want to make it as easy as possible for people to really say, oh, this is who Frank is. This is what Frank's about. And that's where this kind of top half of the profile can be really useful. Mm -hmm. And then the content can add value for the audience and the engagement can be building relationships. Remember your header that provides the explanation and clarity that uh, Dean was speaking to, it follows you around the platform. And so the more you're engaging with your target audience, uh, the more that uh, you're sharing content that's applicable to that audience, the algorithms are gonna pick up on that and start to offer up your profile and your company 
uh, as suggestions. I don't know if you, any of you have been into your my network. Um, LinkedIn starts to offer, you should consider connecting with this person, following this company, joining that group. And it's your header that follows you around the platform. So if you can uh, communicate a lot of information in a very short amount of time, uh, that's going to be key. Mm -hmm. Remember those things. People make strap lines for a reason. They don't make them for the fun of it. They make them because they're impactful and they work Right. So, you know, those strap lines, those key messages, they might seem very superficial and simplistic, but that's what will get and hold the attention. And that's yeah. really, really important in building out that brand is you've got to you've got to help yourself be defined as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. You want people to judge your book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Whereas we normally say don't judge a book by its cover. Actually, yeah. with personal brand, we want them to judge the book by its cover. And in very many cases, what they see of you on LinkedIn is the cover. Yeah. And you raise a good point about seeding. We, we tend to look at something before we decide to read it, which means that uh, this is well known to the magazine uh, industry that puts the uh, catchy headlines and the uh, lots of graphics on the cover of the magazine at checkout. Not that you're going to stand and read it there, but it, in, it instigates curiosity. Yeah. So people go, oh, oh, I'll have a look at this. I'll dig into this. So Matthews asks, what are our thoughts on making a personal website or portfolio CV resume? Uh, what I'd offer, Matthew, is that have your LinkedIn presence define uh, and give examples of um your contributions throughout your career journey and then the content that Dean's been speaking to give a clear demonstration of your understanding and um, perhaps explain some complex topics but use LinkedIn and why am I saying that is people are habitualized to go onto social media they are not habitualized to visit your website or your portfolio your audience is there, so speak to them there. Mm -hmm. By all means, you could have a link somewhere, but if your profile isn't getting them excited about knowing you or interested, they're never going to click that link anyway. So yeah. the profile has to do the work. If you want it there, maybe you know you've got portfolio of work or you know uh, case studies or stuff like that, and you want to direct them there, fine. But actually, it's the profile that gets people interested. So. Um, yeah, I would agree with Graham there. Keep it on the profile. And if you have got chunkier stuff that doesn't fit somewhere on the profile, then maybe a portfolio site. So what do we have coming up? We're cl coming close to the hour, Dean. What do we have coming up on uh, so, next week's? Uh, we have another session next week. What I'll do is I'll share the screen. And I want everybody who's joined us and got some value from today's session what I'd love you to do is go on the event and I'll pull it up on screen in a second. And I'd love you to go to Maverick North America's page. So Maverick North America, what I'd love you to do is go down here, click the events tab and you'll see this is what's happening now. But uh, next week we have five strategies to boost your sales and you can go down here and you can accept and you can register. And when you register, you can invite people. And I'd love if you've got some value from today. First of all, I want you to come along. Same time, go register on the LinkedIn event. But I'd love you to invite some of your network too. You think will get benefit. Some simple strategies they can do to boost sales. So if you've got contacts, um, please go. Um, please go register for that. But also... Uh, come come and bring some people to it too. Lovely. So this is the um, event. And you just register here and then it'll let you invite people. Invite some of your network. Um, that'd be awesome. So we can have a blowout session next week. Excellent. And the week after, I believe we've got securing new job opportunities with LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Graham, you're front and center with that one. I'm front and center with that one. So um, so again, just... register to that one. 
and invite some people as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dean, for uh, staying up uh, late on a school night for us. We uh, greatly appreciate that. And uh, if you do uh, like what you've heard today, please uh, follow us at uh, Maverick North America. And uh, we hope to uh, see you at future, se future sessions. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks everybody. In the past year, Maverick has helped generate more than 15 million in new business. The biggest reason for this is our 90-day training and implementation platform we call the Accelerator Program, where we teach your team to sell on social media with an implement-as-you-go strategy. It's not a pre-recorded course, it's hands-on sales training that develops and grows with you, with 90 days of real action that generates business and long-term revenue. So who is it for? This program is for entrepreneurs, marketing and sales professionals who want to sell without ads, cold calling or pushy tactics. A better way of selling with real steps to take which speeds up your sales process without burning any bridges. These are just a few examples of results our members have achieved using the Accelerator. As you can see, the Accelerator isn't about quick wins, it's about building a better sales process. If you'd like to learn more, just book a call with the Maverick team and we'll show you how the Accelerator program can win you new business.